I'm working full time, sitting in cafes, building my business, staring at my computer screen, and I'm here in Bali. I need to actually have some adventures, learn some things, do some fun things. So I went to surfing. Hi friend, it is Alex McRobbs here, Sober Yoga Girl, and I wanna show you what a day in my life is like in Bali now that I have quit my job as a teacher and I'm running the Mindful Life practice full time. So I moved out to Bali in October of last year and I'm just settling in, learning how to ride a motorbike. I've been riding my bike for a couple of months and so I felt confident enough to take it on the road. So we went for a trip down to Kuta for me to do my very first surfing lesson. And we really enjoyed riding on the bike and traveling around Bali. Before we headed down to Kuta, we decided to go to a cafe near my house called Usha for breakfast. And so we decided to order some pancakes and some coffee. And I spent time with my friend Kadek. And Kadek is someone who I met when I first came into Bali in October. He picked me up at the airport. I was staying at his family's villa and we have been good friends ever since. So he came down with us for my surfing lesson to Kuta. So after we stopped for breakfast at Usha, then we decided to make our way down to Kuta, which is about an hour from Ubud. And we traveled down there for me to do my first surfing lesson. And so I'm someone that would never choose to surf. Like something like that literally terrifies me. I'm not a risk taker, I'm not adventurous, but I had this conversation with one of my yoga teachers about a month ago. He found out I was living in Bali and he said to me, Alex, have you started surfing yet? And I was like, eh, I'm not really like a adventure person. I'm not really interested in that. And he said, when I speak to you in three years, I want you to tell me that you've learned how to surf. So I decided, you know, I'm here in Bali, I'm working full time, sitting in cafes, building my business, staring at my computer screen, and I'm here in Bali. I need to actually have some adventures, learn some things, do some fun things. So I went to surfing. And the interesting thing about this is that when you're doing something that's familiar to you, like practicing yoga, everything just comes easily and second nature. Like for me, I haven't, I learned yoga 10 years ago, right? So that skill to me is very easy. Something like surfing, all the movements were totally brand new. Um, all of the actions, and I just kept forgetting what my teacher was telling me. Luckily, he was like super nice, super cool, and um, very patient, very patient with me as I learned along the way. Put your hands in the middle of the line of the board first, and after that, pull your body directly inside of the board. And make sure your body will be straight, will be full of the rest of the board. So we headed out to the beach. The sand was so hot um, on the feet, like it was just brutal. <laughs> and then we headed into the water and it was actually, believe it or not, I've been in Bali for six months. I visited two times. And this is the first time I've ever been in the ocean in Bali, um, which seems quite ridiculous. So we did not go far from the shore. but I did have some reflections on the practice, which I share now. <laughs> Reminded me a lot of when I was a grade one teacher and you used to teach kids things and it would take them like forever, right? To learn to add, it would take a kid forever and you're like, why don't you get this, it's so easy. And then you practice learning something as an adult and, and that took me like seven or eight times before I could stand on it, you know? And so it's like everything, it's really good to remember what it's like to be like a learner. So I have this favorite quote that I was thinking about when I was surfing, and it is a quote from Humans of New York, which is a blog in New York where strangers get interviewed on the street. And the quote says, when a wave comes, go deep. There are three things that you can do when life sends a wave from you. You can run from the wave, but it's gonna catch up with you and clobber you. You can try to stand your ground and fall back on your ego, ego, but it's still gonna clobber you. Or you can go deep and transform yourself to match the circumstances. And that's how you get through the wave. 
and I was thinking a lot about this quote because that really is what surfing is, right? You're transforming yourself to match the circumstance of the water, of the wave, and move with the waves. And instead of trying to fight the waves, you just go with them and that's how you get through it. So we learned a little surfer handshake, which was really, really fun. And I was super proud of myself, but I was totally ready to leave and just check out. So while I was learning to surf, Kadek was down on the beach with me. Putri, who is the amazing programs manager that's working for the Mindful Life Practice, she was in a cafe across the street, actually getting the whole Sober Girls Yoga platform ready for all of you. So she was organizing all of the videos, organizing all the contents, making all the journals. She is like a super hero. Um, it was amazing. So it was very nice to meet her and see her amazing work. And then we headed back from the beach to get back to Ubud. On the way, we decided to stop for some Indonesian food. Well, actually what happened was Putri and Kadek wanted the food. And then when I saw how good it was, I wanted it too. So then I stopped and got some as well. And the funny thing is that when they said it was satay, I said, am I saying that right? Satay. <laughs> <laughs> so the funny thing was that I was telling them about this restaurant called Satay on the Road. They said, oh, Satay. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, we have this restaurant called Satay on the Road. I didn't know it was Indonesian. And then we stopped the bikes and they grabbed some Satay and then they came back and I said, oh, you guys are having Satay on the Road, <laughs> which I thought was very funny. <laughs> So I stopped eating meat when I first got sober, but I've recently decided to start eating meat again. So I'm learning about um, all the different things I can do to keep my mood and my mental health better so that I'm not struggling with my uh, mood anymore. And someone I'm reading, her name is, um, I forget her name, but basically she's, she's talking about how meat is easier and easier protein for your stomach to digest and so it can help with your mental health if you have a food disorder and so I thought you know I've been um I've been vegan ever since I got sober I've never tried eating meat and sobriety and so I don't know how it's going to help me feel better um so so I so started eating meat again and it's good <laughs> but I think that it's you know for every person they need to decide what's right for them nutritionally not up to us to be telling people like what is right for you and not right for you and so um, but yeah I was, I was a vegan ever since I was vegetarian ever since I got sober back and forth between vegan and vegetarian over like three years and tomorrow I'm three years sober and uh, I'm you now eating meat so I'm having some satay on the road sober back and forth. The reason why which I explain a little bit in the video is that I am exploring different holistic ways to help manage my mood disorder, which is something I'm getting more into talking about, suffering from bipolar disorder and different holistic ways that I can manage it. And um, one of the things I've been reading about is eating more meat because meat is a healthier protein to, and a bit easier for you to break down in your belly. So I decided to eat some satay with them and it was so good. It smelled so good. Like if you come to do a yoga retreat in Bali and you're a meat eater, we're gonna stop. We're gonna have some satay on the road, especially if you're from my neighborhood in North Toronto, um, because I think it would be cool to experience that. <laughs> so after our satay on the road, we took our bikes back to my house in Ubud, and then we, the four of us, sat down and ate our satay on the road. Except it was satay in the house. <laughs> and that's a typical day in Bali for me. Now that I am a sober yoga entrepreneur running the Mindful Life practice full time, this is what it looks like. And I cannot wait for you to come down in Bali, do a yoga retreat with me, do a yoga teacher training and see what all the hype is about.